In this lecture, we are going to understand what is a module in NestJS and what do we use it for. Modules are the fundamental building block of a NestJS application that encapsulates related controllers, services, providers and other components. They promote code organization, reusability and testability. So what do we use a module for? We use a module to break down the application into smaller self-contained units, making it easier to manage and understand the code. NestJS uses dependency injection to provide modules with the necessary dependencies, promoting loose coupling and testability. Now, a module can be used to manage services, controllers or other classes. And finally, we can also import and export modules within other modules. This will allow one module to use the functionality of other modules. And we are going to understand all these things practically in our coming lectures. Now, think of a module like a package of specific functionality. So whenever you create a new functionality inside your NestJS application, you can create a separate module for that. For example, let's say you want to add some user related functionality in your application, like creating a user, getting a user detail, updating a user detail or deleting a given user. So all these functionalities are user specific. So for these functionalities, you can create a separate module. Let's say we will call it as users, which will take care of all the user specific tasks. In the same way for user sign up or login, you can create a separate module called as authentication. And this module will contain all the functionality related to user authentication. And in this way, we can separate specific functionalities in their respective modules. Now, when we create a module for a user, that module will be the entry point for that specific functionality. And we will understand it in a bit. Now, each module has some files associated with it. And there are two main files of a module, the controller file and the service file. So, a controller file ends with .controller.cs. For example, let's say we are creating a user module. So the file name will be user.module.ts. And for this module, there will be some associated files. And two important files will be controller file and service file. So for this module, there will be a user.controller.ts file. So remember that the convention is when you create a controller file, it should end with .controller. Okay, when you create a service file, that file name must have dot service in it. This is just a naming convention. It is not required, but when you add dot service or dot controller in the file name, it basically tells the developer that that particular file is a controller file or a service file or a test file or a model file. So for a model file, it should have dot entity in it. For a test file, it should be controller dot spec dot ts. For a controller file, it should have dot controller in it. So it should end with dot controller dot ts. And for a service file, it should end with dot service dot ts. So these are the naming conventions for controller services, spec dot ts file and model file. Okay, so every module has some associated files for it. And the two most important files are controller file and service file. The controller file will be responsible for storing logic to receive and handle incoming requests for that particular functionality. For example, let's say the user is making a request to our NestJS application to get a list of all the users. So in the controller file, we will write a logic. We will create a method which will be responsible for handling that request. So if the request is of type get and in the request, the client is requesting for the list of users. Then there will be a method inside this controller file, which will handle that type of request. Okay. Now in the controller, we will write the logic to receive the request and handle it. But we will not write the complete business logic inside the controller file. Instead, the business logic will be present inside the service file. So the service file will contain all the actual business logics for each type of request and it will create a proper response for each type of request. Then 
the spec.ts file, this controller.spec.ts file, it is basically a test file which will contain the test logic for testing your controller. Okay, and for a module file, we can also have an entity.ts file or schema.ts file, and we will talk about it later in this course when we will use it. But this controller and service file are the two main files for a module. And the spec.ts file it is also an important file because inside this file we write the testing logic for that particular controller of a given module, but we can also omit this file. Okay, now when we create a Nest.js project for the first time using Nest.js CLI, by default it comes with one module which is called as app module. The app module is the main module of a Nest.js application and it is used to connect to other modules. Every other module which we will create in the Nest.js application, it needs to be connected to this app module because this app module is the root module of our application and Nest.js application only knows about this app module. If we create a new module in our application, that must be connected to this app module so that the Nest.js application will be aware about that module. So when we create a Nest.js project using Nest.js CLI, it creates an app module and that app module has these three associated files. It has this app controller.ts file which contains the app controller class. It has this app service.ts file which contains the app service class and it also has this app controller.spec.ts file which contains the testing logic for that app controller. Okay. So remember that this app module is the main module of our Nest.js application. Nest.js application is aware about this app module and whenever we create a user defined module, that module must be connected with this app module. And we do that by importing that user defined module inside this app module. Now, as we learned earlier, a module can have different types of files associated with it, which performs different functionalities. And there can be many types of files which we can associate with the module, but the four commonly used files are the controller file, the service file, the entity or the schema file, and the test file, the spec.ts file. So the controller file is responsible for handling all the incoming HTTP requests and it routes those requests to appropriate handler. Then the service file contains the business logic for the module. So basically it contains the logic for handling data access, calculation and other core functionalities. Then the entity file defines the structure of database entities. The entity file is like a model file. So you can have user model, product model. So this entity file is basically that model file. Just like entity file, we can also have a schema.ts file. So when we work with Mongoose there, Instead of having an entity, we define a schema based on which we create collections in MongoDB. So when we are working with MongoDB using Mongoose, there we will have schema.ts file. But if we are working with some ORM, some object relational mapping like this type ORM, in that case, we will have an entity file and that entity file will be like a model file. And then we also have test files, which contains the unit test for the controller to ensure its functionalities. All right. Now, when we define a user defined module, the first thing which we do is we create a new file. Once we have created the module file inside that we create a module and a module is nothing but a TypeScript class, which we decorate with at module decorator. So any class which we decorate with at module decorator becomes a module class. Now, once the module class is created, it must be imported in the main module so that the Nest.js application is aware about that new user defined module. So for example, let's say if we have created a user module, we must import that user module in our main module and the main module of a Nest.js application is usually the app module. So we must import user module in the app module so that the Nest.js application will be aware about that. So when our Nest.js application runs, the main.ts is the entry point of our Nest.js application, 
which bootstraps the main module, the root module of our application. And in most of the cases, the root module is the app module. Okay, now in the app module, we import all other modules which we create. For example, let's say we have created this user module and the tweet module. Then in order to use these modules in our Nest.js application, we must connect it to this app module. And how do we connect it? We connect it by importing these modules in the app module. And in this way, the Nest.js application will also know about this user module and this tweet module. Now, we can also connect two different user defined modules. For example, let's say we have this user module and this tweet module. Now, every tweet will be associated with the user, right? So a user will write a tweet. So for every tweet, there will be a user. So we might want to use this user module inside this tweet module whenever a new tweet is displayed. So for example, when a user makes a tweet, with that tweet, we might also want to show the user who has made that tweet. So we might want to use this user module inside this tweet module. And that is also possible. So we can also connect two user defined modules. And we will learn how we can do that in our coming lectures. So in this lecture, we had a very high level overview of what is a module in Nest.js application and what do we use it for? And what are the associated files for a module in Nest.js? Now here we have learned everything theoretically. In the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's create a user defined module and let's understand how we can use that user defined module in our Nest.js application.